Hi, Seattle Cocktail Club people. Uh, welcome to our very special Beautiful Booze and Partida tequila event. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this or are aware that today is National Happy Hour Day. So today is a really good day to kick back with some tequila and learn how to make some delicious cocktails. Um, a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. We have a comment section in the chat where we will be doing a Q&A after the presentation today. So if you have any questions along the way, by all means, put them in the chat and we will try to answer them specifically for you. If you have your Partita Tequila at home, uh, pour yourself a drink and drink along as you learn about the product and learn how to make great cocktails with it. If you don't happen to have any at home, feel free to grab any tequila and pour yourself a drink. Um, it is National Happy Hour Day after all. We are very excited that tonight we have two amazing guests. Our first guest is Natalie and Natalie is from Beautiful Booze. Natalie is a home bartender, a cocktail stylist, and if you haven't seen the Beautiful Booze website, she takes amazing cocktail photos and has been traveling all around the world until COVID set in. Natalie is the author of the book that you'll be receiving, and I know that you haven't received your books yet. Uh, we just got them in, and Natalie is going to sign them for you, and we'll send them out to you directly. Mm -hmm. And um, so welcome, Natalie. Thank you. And our other guest this evening is Sophia, and she is the national brand ambassador for Partida. And she's going to talk to us all about the brand and the line and everything that you're tasting tonight. So we are very lucky to have Sophia as well. Welcome, Sophia. Thank you. Wonderful to be here. We are super excited. So I'm going to like stop talking and get into the good stuff and um, just give you a little bit of a play by play of what's going to happen tonight. We're going to start with the tequila, the partita tequila information, and then we are going to go into the cocktail making. And we're um, Natalie's going to show you how to make three um, cocktails with this delicious tequila. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand it over to you, Sophia. Perfect. Well, thank you all for joining. I'm so excited to be sharing our lovely tequila with you. Uh, Partida is my last name, my family's last name, and it's a tribute to our tequila heritage in the state of Jalisco in the Tequila Valley, which is where Partida comes from. And Partida is all about purity and precision, going back to the very beginning with my late uncle Don Enrique's philosophy, as he was one of the larger agave farmers in Jalisco, and he believed that the care and the tenderness um, and the love that he gave to his farm and to his agave would always show up as mastery in the glass. So we are truly living by that philosophy from field to glass and really expressing the mastery through our liquid. Um, Partida comes from the Tequila Valley. This is an area in Jalisco that is the most historic growing region, the most historic tequila producing region. It's referred to as the lowlands. Sometimes I like to call it the red wine of tequila because many tequilas from this area are very big and bold and have very big personalities. And Partida is a beautiful representation of that style, of that valley. You can imagine being at the base of a, of a volcano, the soil, the lava stone and the clay, all these beautiful, um, all of these beautiful elements really infiltrating the agave. So these lowland tequilas are, are a beautiful representation of that valley and of the soil and, and just the rolling valleys there. So Partida is in that vein, in that style with a few um, interesting, delicate exceptions. And, and one of the exceptions is how agave forward it is. Um, and the reason is not only because we're using that ripe agave and harvesting it in, in a very um, systematic way, um, it's also because we make sure that before the agave gets into the cooking production process, it is fresh. So we harvest our agaves and within 24 hours, we get them into the production cycle. Um, it, that can't be said for a lot of brands. Typically you will see um, you know, piles and piles of agave sitting outside of the distillery. And, and that really isn't what you want because then you are um, 
know, you could be having mold or bacteria and things like that that will definitely affect the agave. So fresh agave, very important. Um, we are cooking our agave in a stainless steel autoclave, which is which is basically just like a giant pressure cooker, as opposed to the traditional methods, which are usually a stone, clay, oven, uh, very porous material. So those types of ovens will lend um, usually a little bit of smoke to the tequila because if you can imagine the inside of a fireplace, that's what those ovens look like. So I tell people if they really love a smoky tequila, the Blanco, because it's so agave forward and it is completely absent of smoke, you know, maybe try our Reposado or some of our aged expressions because then you're then that the charness of the barrel will come through. But in the Blanco, because of course that is an unaged tequila, it's never, it's never dressed up by the wood. It's truly an agave forward tequila with absolutely no smoke at all, either on the nose or the flavor. So after it's cooked low and slow for about a 24 hour, pro, uh, 24 hour period, we, we use a, an automated roller machine and there's four. Um, and we basically were juicing our agave. We're adding water at this point. We are doing an open air fermentation using wild yeast. So we're not closing the tanks or heating them. It all happens very naturally. We're not adding artificial yeast at that point. That takes about a couple of days. At that point, we go into a double distillate. So it's twice distilled in a stainless steel uh, one, it's a stainless steel pot with a, with a copper interior. Um, after it rests for a period of time, it goes into a bottle and becomes the Blanco, which is, of course, the base of all of our tequila. So anytime I want to study another competitive brand, I'll always go for the Blanco because here you are seeing the skill of the tequilero. You are seeing you know, the ripe agave should show up here or the unripe agave will show up here much more than in a tequila that has been kissed by wood or rested in wood. So the Blanco tequila, or some people call their silvers, um, these, this is what's gonna reflect the skill of the tequila house. So uh, our Blanco is outstanding. Again, it's so agave forward. It has some very beautiful notes from the soil. Um, it's really a lovely expression at this point. We will put it into a barrel and it will become either the Reposado, Añejo, Extra Añejo, and I have a whole new line to tell you about that is our double barrel tequila. But let's go down the line. And I understand that some of you have our Reposado, so I would like to take you through a very quick tasting of the Reposado. The Reposado and all of our tequilas are rested in American oak bourbon barrels. So the Reposado is a six month rest. So this Going to, I like to say the Blanco is naked, the Reposado has clothes on. So it begins to become more dressed. So here you're going to notice the color. Obviously, the wood has lent itself in a very beautiful way. We're looking at some pretty golden color here. Um, on the texture, I always like to swirl in the glass and kind of get it up as high as you can. And you're going to notice there that a little, a little string of pearls will pop, break. And then in Mexico, we say that if your tequila is not crying, it's not worth drinking. So what happens here are the tears form, they fall in the and they fall in the glass and they cry. So this is a beautiful texture you wanna see every time you are experiencing a lovely tequila. So if you swirl that again and give it a little nose, you're going to see the agave is definitely still present, but again, it's been kissed by the wood here. So now there's some layers on top of that, of that basic agave that was such a beautiful, simple um, agave in the Blanco. It has now, again, a little bit more dressed up, more layers, some fruitiness. Um, I like to make the, uh, the thread from the Blanco all the way through as that cooked yam. So in the Blanco, that cooked yam is very pronounced. And then here in the Reposado, you're gonna get cooked yam, but now it has honey. It's been baked into it. So it's a little bit of glazing going on now. A little citrus, some, some toasted nuts and seeds. It's just lovely. Salud. I always like to pay attention how my mouth feels when I'm drinking this tequila. So what's going on for me? 
a lot of tingling sensations. Uh, my cheeks are salivating. The tip of my tongue is tingling. So the, this is all very healthy. The nose and the flavor should match. So your nose and your mouth should agree. So if you're smelling an intense baking spice, you should be tasting it as well. So I'm getting a nice long finish. There's weight in my mouth. Tequila has mouthfeel. It's not an over distilled product or spirit like, like vodka, for instance. Tequila has weight, so it should feel heavy in your mouth and it should have a nice long finish like this reposado. So moving down the line, we go from six months, and I'm gonna show you the difference in color, to the Añejo, now 18 months in that same barrel. So you can see it's one year difference. It's quite dramatic in terms of the color and it's the same in terms of the flavor. So the Reposado started beginning some baking spices, but the, in the Añejo, they're intense. You're gonna get you know, cinnamon and cardamom and clove and all these really beautiful, rich, almost after dinner style of tequila in the Reposado. Uh, this is something that not too many people know about because we haven't officially launched it yet. This is Partida's Añejo Cristalino. So this is exactly the same juice that I just showed you with the Añejo, but it's been drained of its color using activated charcoal and coconut fiber plates. So this is not a distillation, this is a filtration to remove a little bit of the color. And at the same time, it's going to remove a little of the mouthfeel, a little of the aroma and a little of the flavor. So this is something a clear spirit person might choose over the brown spirit, or this is something that's lighter in style, that if someone is maybe new to the tequila category, this is a lovely place to start them. Um, down the line, we are gonna go into our Elegante. This is our Extra Añejo. This has been barrel aged for 40 months. So um, anything over three years is considered an Extra Añejo. And this is just lovely. The baking spices are times three here. It's got a lot of, uh, it's got a lot of personality, a lot of levels of flavor. Um, again, you know, that Blanco tequila being very simple. And as you move up in the aging process, it becomes, it becomes more layered. So there's much more going on, more complex. So I'm going to put these away and show you our new luxury sipping line. We call Roble Fino. Roble Fino means fine oak. And in 2016, Partita joined the Edrington Americas portfolio, and they own some very beautiful um, world-recognized single malt scotches, including their biggest, the Macallan. They have Glen Rothes, Highland Park. Uh, they make a few others as well. But when we joined their portfolio in 2016, our master distiller was invited to Scotland to understand the whiskey make, making process. And he got so excited, he fell in love with single malt scotch. So he said, let's create the first single malt of tequila. So we brought some barrels from one of these beautiful distilleries. And now we are producing our own single malt of tequila. And this is, this is what we have. So these barrels that come from Scotland have been infused with sherry. So these are sherry seasoned single malt barrels. So just to give you an idea, these are 250 liter hogshead with a beautiful medium char, but you can imagine all of the, all of what's going on in these barrels from the sherry seasoning to two cycles of 12 year single malt scotch. So these, these, sh these barrels are almost 30 years old when we get them. So what we have here first, is our Roble Fino Añejo. So as this will start as our Partido Cor Añejo, so six months American Oak bourbon, and then it's gonna go into this barrel for, for uh, two months. The ABV is a little higher than our core at 43%. And this is a stunning tequila. As you can see, it's, you know, the, the package is much more premium. Um, it's very, very beautiful crystal package. And it's just a gorgeous tequila. It's, it's wonderful, especially if you're a whiskey lover. The sherry undertone here is very dramatic. It's a gorgeous tequila. Um, we have produced another Cristalino. 
So this is the Roblofino Crystallino, which is exactly the juice I just showed you with that filtration process, that natural filtration process to remove the color and a little bit of some of the other elements. So this is our Roblofino. It's beautiful. It's Crystallino Reposado. This is one of the first actually Crystallinos that is made with Reposado with those sherry seasoned uh, barrels. Um, finally, we have our Roblofino Añejo. This one has been aged in the barrels that held single malt scotch for five months. And the ABV here is 45. So it's a bit, it's a bit stronger, but you really hardly notice it because after all that aging in Mexico, our master distiller said he had to wake it up. So he had to pump up that ABV a bit, but all the Partita line has absolutely no additives. So that 1% that is allowable in the tequila industry for things like colors, flavoring agents, glycerin, we completely eliminated. So we do not add additives to any of our brands. So they're just, just, just beautiful. Thank you. Is it my turn? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Natalie from Beautiful Booze. As I was introduced, um, I do a lot of stuff over on Instagram and my handle is at Beautiful Booze. And like what was mentioned before, I recently published a book in August, the end of August called Beautiful Booze, Stylish Cocktails to Make It Home. So um, this is pretty fitting for what we're gonna be doing today. I have picked three tequila cocktails out of the book um, to demonstrate and show you how to make today right from the comfort of your home. Um, I'm very impressed with the Partita line, um, especially I tend to gravitate to a Reposado, but really with these cocktails, especially the two that we're shaking, um, you can definitely use the Blanco or the Reposado. And then the cocktail that I'm going to be stirring today, um, I really love this cocktail with the Reposado, but you can definitely uh, make it with an Anejo. That's what I have listed in the book. So a lot of these cocktails are going to be um, based on your taste and what you really want to do, and you can customize them. And another thing that I wanted to mention that I really like about the Partita line, specifically um, the Blanco and the Reposado, is that when you're buying a spirit, I think it's great to buy one that's very versatile, one that is really good um, for sipping, but also tastes great in cocktails. Because I, for me, my philosophy is I think that it's just like wine. When you cook with wine, you want to cook with the wine that you want to drink with. With um, cocktails, you also want to make them with a quality spirit and with a spirit that tastes good by itself. Because what we're trying to do here is really bring the spirit to life so you can taste it and amp it up a bit through the cocktail. We don't want to put so many ingredients into a cocktail that you can no longer taste um, the assets of the tequila, the agave and the notes that you would taste when you were sipping it straight. Um, so with that being said, um, you can ask me any questions and I'm also reporting here live from Seattle. So here we go. The first one I'm gonna make is one of the most popular cocktails from the book and it's called Enjoying a, Enjoying a Margarita in Venezia. And the reason that it's called that is I've essentially taken the margarita and the Aperol spritz and combined them. And I think that it's a very good cocktail. So we're gonna start with that. And our ingredients are gonna be the Partita Reposado. We're gonna use a little bit of Aperol some lime, a little bit of orange juice, and some agave syrup. And on that note, when I get to some of these things, I'm gonna talk about it, but one thing that I'm sweetening the cocktail with is agave, and I've made a note in the book, and I also wanted to make a note here that 
there's a lot of agave syrups when you go to the grocery store and they're not all alike. So you want to be careful um, with the measurements and tend to err on the side of less is more because if you add too much, it can really sweeten up your cocktail. So you want to make sure that you monitor that while you're making the cocktail. So for this drink, we're going to shake it. And I'm, I'm using a two-piece shaker, but if you don't have to have fancy bar tools at home to make these cocktails, you can definitely shake in a jar if you do not have um, a shaker at home, it's not going to be a problem. So we're going to get started with that. We're going to start with the Partita Reposado. We're going to do one and a half ounces of that into our shaker. And to have a balanced drink, I think it's important to measure the ingredients. I've made so many cocktails in my lifetime, but I still do not feel comfortable just trying to eyeball it. So I would recommend measuring if you can. We're gonna do one ounce of Aperol and this is what that looks like. This is available um, at the grocery stores here in Washington. It's pretty easy to find. So one ounce of that will go into our shaker. Next, we're gonna do one ounce of lime juice. So this is another thing I wanted to talk about is um, when we're calling for juice in cocktails, for one, that means it's gonna be, a, it's gonna, the drink is gonna be made in a shaker because you need to marry all the ingredients and juice needs to be shaken. But also I would recommend using fresh juice, fresh squeezed juice. Using fresh squeezed lemon and limes really takes your drink to the, to the next level. And that's a tip that I say is the best home bartending tip is using fresh citrus that will take your cocktail game up another level. So with that being said, we have a lime here and I'm gonna actually measure this out too because you don't wanna overdo the citrus either. Um, so this is one of my frequently used tools in the kitchen, the citrus press. This does lemons and limes and again, this is something that you can find easily. It's great for all kinds of sauces or dressings, so not just for cocktails. Uh, I would recommend though, if you do want to measure, it might be easier to squeeze it in a bowl and then pour it in, in into your jigger and then measure out or like a measuring cup or something like that. So we're gonna do one ounce of that. Next. We're gonna do um, one half ounce of orange. And if you know like the Aperol spritz, the orange is a part of that. It's garnished with the orange. And we're actually gonna garnish this with an orange peel. And to be a little bit more sustainable at home um, with cocktails, so I'm gonna juice half of this orange, but I'm also gonna go ahead and peel off some of the citrus so we can use it for our garnish before I squeeze this. Um, and I do this with a lot of my citrus. I, even if you don't use the peel for your garnish, you can use these pe citrus peels for other things. I've made a lot of candied citrus, which seems complicated, but it's really easy. I think it's just a great thing to save. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna squeeze this in about a half an ounce, there we go, of the orange. And then, like I said, we're gonna do a half an ounce of agave. You might wanna do more or less depending on the brand. And that is the bulk of our drink at this point. What we're gonna do is go ahead, add some ice and shake it up. And usually um, you want to shake around 30 seconds. That'll really mix everything up and balance the cocktail with some dilution. Okay, now that we got that done, 
One thing you also want to remember to do before you pour and serve up your cocktail is we're going to add a little bit of salt to the rim of the glass. And I'm going to serve this cocktail up in a, a wine glass. This works with any glass. I mean, whatever you have on hand. I like the, uh, I like this wine glass for this cocktail. So to rim your glass with salt, you're going to take, um, some citrus, like half of the lime, and you're just going to run it over the top of your glass. And then I've just taken some salt here, put it on a plate. You're just going to dunk the top of your glass in, and then you get this beautiful salt rim. So after we have that, I'm going to serve this on ice, like an Aperol spritz would be done. Um, you don't have to serve it on ice, it's a personal preference. And one second, because I realize I don't have my strainer. It happens every time, doesn't it? <laughs> I actually have my double, so I'm, I'm gonna use a double strain for this. And I actually have that one. So you can use this or not, it's optional. I'm using this because it's gonna catch any particles like pulp from the citrus juices. It's gonna take that, it's gonna strain that out. Now at home, some people might have a um, three piece shaker, which means you already have a strainer on the end of your shaker, but I don't have that. So after we pour that up, you'll notice it's a gorgeous orange color from the Aperol. And then we're just going to go ahead and take our orange peel that we peeled off. And I'm just going to clean it up a little bit to cut some of those ends off. And we're just going to do an orange twist. And what you can do is, as you see, I clean that up. You can just take both ends and turn towards the center, and then you get um, your orange twist. You can add that onto the side of your glass, whoops. And that is what our final cocktail is. This is our enjoying a margarita in Venezia, which I wish I was doing, but we're enjoying it at home. So we'll go ahead and try that. And that is so good. So like I said before, this is a cross between an Aperol spritz and a margarita. And I think they blend very well together, taking the best parts of each and putting them together for a perfect cocktail. Natalie, we had a question come in. Do you have a specific kind of salt that you like to use on the rim? So I'm using like a Pacific sea salt, but it's really a personal preference. I think, um, if you like a little bit of spice, like I enjoy tahine, I think that's great, which would be like a salt that's mixed with chili. That's, I love that. So that's one of my favorites. And, but otherwise, if I don't have that on hand, I just like a regular like sea salt. Great. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna clear some of this away. While you're clearing, we're getting some delicious comments in the chat. So I think, I think it's, it's already being enjoyed. Perfect. So, you know, if you, if you like more bitter stuff, I mean, I really like this combo, but if you want it, if you want this drink to be a bit more bitter, you could actually substitute the Aperol for Campari. I haven't tried that yet, but I think it would be really delicious if you do like um, more of that bitter. So that's definitely something that you can try with this cocktail to make it a little bit more versatile if you want. Now, um, moving on, we're gonna switch to a stirred cocktail. And I just wanted to say, if you do not have a, a proper mixing glass like this, you'll notice that you can make this cocktail in the glass. If you don't want to deal with having like another dish to clean, or you just don't have one of these mixing glasses, it's no problem to make the cocktail in a it, to make this cocktail in in your actual glass. You're going to drink it out of. So. Um, this cocktail is called Lashes and Diamonds. I was, I was telling them before, I'm not sure why I called it Lashes and Diamonds. I have done several um, 
pop-ups around the world at different bars. Um, one specifically in Mexico City called Hanky Panky. It's one of my favorite bars in the world. I made this drink there. Um, and this drink is gonna have our partita reposado. It's gonna have an ounce of a blanc vermouth and then we're gonna put in some orange liqueur. I really like orange. Um, with tequila, I think it tastes really good. And so I think these, this combination is really great. This is gonna produce a drier cocktail with a little bit of orange notes. And I really like that. So anyone that enjoys like a spirit forward cocktail is gonna really like this cocktail. And like I said before, in the book, I do make this cocktail with an Añejo tequila, but the Reposado tequila works really great in this too. It's just a personal preference. So what we're gonna do to get started is we're gonna do, again, one and a half ounces of our Reposado tequila. And we'll just go ahead, pour that into our mixing glass. Then we're gonna do one ounce of Blanc Vermouth. Really, you can pick the brand that you like here. I'm just, this is easily found. This is Dolan. It's a French vermouth. I'm gonna do one ounce of that. Okay. And then we're gonna do a half an ounce of orange liqueur. Now, you can put whatever you like. Again, I think cocktails are best when you use the ingredients that you like to drink. Um, you could use a triple sec. I'm using this dry Curacao orange liqueur here um, because I really like this brand. But again, you can use what you like. This is going to be um, a half an ounce. So those are all of our ingredients. It's a three ingredient cocktail, which I really like. And I think um, one, I talk about this a little bit in the book about this cocktail. I said, I don't know why I named it, but my inspiration for this cocktail is I lived about three months in a, in a place called San Cristobal de la Casas in uh, Mexico. And I, I found it hard to find a lot of alcohol beyond tequila. And so I started creating um, three ingredient cocktails and now since COVID, I'm making a ton of three ingredient cocktails. I really believe in three ingredient cocktails because the daiquiri, the gimlet, all of those classic cocktails have not a lot of ingredients. So this is one that I've kind of taken inspiration from my travels in Mexico to create. So we're just going to add ice and when you do this, you want to make sure to keep the to get the cocktail chilled. You want to make sure you put in enough ice to stir this. If you're if you're making this in your glass, you can just um, fill your glass with ice and then stir. And this is a spoon that I will use to stir. And this is what that looks like. So after we stir that, we're gonna go ahead and strain this. And I'm gonna actually, since I went through the motion of making this in the mixing glass, I'm gonna serve this on a, um, a clear ice cube. I like the presentation and the clear ice cubes, the, the bigger cubes, they melt, they melt slower so they don't dilute your cocktail as fast if you wanna take some time to drink it. So we're just gonna put the strainer on top and strain our cocktail in. Now, I just wanted to say if 
You can also make this in more of an, an old fashioned style. So if you did, if the orange liqueur did not make this cocktail sweet enough for you, you could add a, like a bar spoon of agave syrup if you wanted to make this cocktail a bit sweeter. Again, depending on the orange liqueur that you use, like I use one that's more dry, some of the triple sex are sweeter. You can add a little bit of agave if you, if you feel like your cocktail isn't balanced out enough. So again, with this one to bring forth the orange notes, we're gonna do another orange peel. You could also do a slice of orange if you would like. So I'm here, here we go again. And this, what I'm using is called a vegetable peeler and you can find these everywhere. Like I got this one at the Dollar Tree like three or four years ago. So they're pretty reasonably priced and they're versatile for all kinds of stuff, even in the bar. Um, so I'm gonna clean this up. This one's a little bit smaller. What I'm gonna do is for the final touch on this cocktail, I'm gonna express some of the citrus oils from this orange over our cocktail. So when we drink this cocktail, we're gonna get all of this orange citrus aroma as we're drinking it. And combined with the agave notes, the tequila, it's gonna be very delicious. So what you're gonna to do to do that is you're gonna take the orange peel and squeeze it between your fingers. And you're just going to squeeze as hard as you can and point down over the cocktail like this. And you probably can't see on here, but it's not that hard. You may have been in a bar before where you see a bartender squeeze this uh, citrus oil over your cocktail. Well, it's easy to do at home. And after you do that, you can round it on the rim of your glass to add additional aromas. And then just tuck this orange peel in the front of your glass for the garnish. Mm -hmm. We're going to try this. Mm. And I love this drink because you're getting orange notes. The vermouth dries out the cocktail a little bit, but I feel like this cocktail really shows the qualities of the tequila. And this is why it's one of my favorite stirred cocktails. So that's our second lineup. Now, uh, for our third cocktail, we're gonna do a variation on a Paloma, which is a classic tequila cocktail. It's one of my favorite cocktails. It's, um, it's a long drink, meaning it's usually served as a, as a highball in a highball glass. So it's something to drink that's very refreshing. And um, yeah, it's one of my favorites. So I'm just gonna, Clean this up quickly because we're going to shake this. All right. So for this drink, it's called Pass the Honey Honey. It's also in the book. Um, and what I was going to say, I'll tell you all this in a minute, but we're going to be using tequila, lime juice, some grapefruit juice, and some honey syrup in this cocktail. And then we're going to top it off with some soda. So I think in Mexico, they use tequila and then they top the tequila off with some grapefruit soda. So this is a little bit of a twist on that. We're adding a little bit of lime to add some acid to the cocktail to balance it out. And then instead of agave, which I have used to complement the agave and the tequila, I'm going to use honey because I've gotten obsessed with honey syrup. And before I get started, I just wanted to say, if you haven't made honey syrup at home, it's something that I've been making all the time during quarantine because I feel like a lot of people already have honey at home. And literally all you have to do to make honey syrup at home is just take honey and add some hot water from a kettle or boil it on the stove and just um, stir in the wa hot water until the honey dissolves and, and basically that's honey syrup. So it's so easy to make at home and I've been utilizing it in like every single cocktail and margaritas and daiquiris and gimlets, everything. So um, I think it works great in this application. 
So we're gonna get started and we're gonna use our shaker again. We're gonna do an ounce and a half of our partita reposado again, right into our shaker. Next, we're gonna do a half an ounce of lime. Because we're adding grapefruit juice, we don't need a ton of acid here, but just a little hit um, to balance out the sweetness of the honey that's gonna go in here. So that's gonna be about a half of a lime right into our shaker. Then we're gonna do two ounces of grapefruit juice and I have my ingredients over here. I'm gonna grab. So we'll measure two ounces of our grapefruit juice to our shaker. And then um, we're gonna do around a half an ounce to three quarter ounce of our honey syrup, depending on how thick you made it. I'm going to go with a half an ounce because I like very citrus forward. And then that's it. We're gonna go ahead and shake this up. About 30 seconds, we'll shake this up. Okay. Now, as I said, for this, we're gonna serve it into a highball glass. I'm just using this one, it's, it's on a little pedestal. And we will go ahead and before I forget, this is a preference also. And I, I recently did a TikTok video mm -hmm. that has probably over a hundred thousand views on how to ring your glass and how to make different patterns on your glass when you ring it. And one of my solutions was to actually use honey, and you can paint a you can paint a whatever kind of salt design you want on your glass, if you don't just want to rim the top with salt, but it's your personal preference. If you don't like salt, then you don't have to put it on here. So again, you're just gonna take whatever citrus you have lying around. You can um, run it over the top, flip over your glass, and you will get that. If you do want to switch it up, you can make a cool design. Gonna add some ice. You might have to break this down. There we go. Okay, and we will go ahead and strain this cocktail into our highball glass. Now to this, as you will see with the regular Paloma, we're gonna add some um, sparkling water. You can actually, if you wanna add like a grapefruit sparkling water, you can do that as well. And this is kind of a big glass, so I'm not gonna fill it all the way to the top because I don't want it to be diluted. But after that, we're just going to give this a stir so everything mixes together. And then we will garnish this with a grapefruit, like half of a grapefruit wheel. So. So this will be your grapefruit wheel right into the top of that. And this is our gorgeous um, past the honey, honey pull, pull variation. So let's go ahead and try this. That looks delicious. Oh, you're making me so thirsty, Natalie. Oh my <laughs> God. So um, easy to make, very refreshing. Um, I want, my goal here today was to showcase drink that really brought out 
the Reposado Partita. And I think all three of these really bring out the notes. And again, like any of these drinks that do call for agave or honey, you can really customize these to make them with whatever you have on hand. Um, my suggestion would be if you have anything all on hand to make these cocktails, it's to have the fresh juices because that's really going to make a difference in the way that your cocktail tastes. So that's my biggest tip for the home bartender, having the fresh orange and grapefruit and limes and lemons is really going to take your cocktail to the next level. Um, and yeah, so in the book, whoops, all three of these are in the book. I, um, was going to say that the last cocktail that I made past the honey, honey, that's, I actually have an entire chapter called happy hour. So this is dedicated to national happy hour day and it's a happy hour section of the book. Um, I have some fun chapters in here. The first one that I made are um, Aperol spritz, margarita, pombo, that is in the day drinking section of the book. And then our last, our middle cocktail, Lashes and Diamonds, that is in, that's also in our happy hour section. So I have a lot of cocktails, about 150 cocktails in this book. They all have photos. So you'll see, um, this is our past the honey, honey that we just made here. And you'll be able to see all the photos and just enjoy the cocktail recipe. So thank you so much for letting me demo these. This was just such a great opportunity. And obviously I've spent most of my adult life living in Seattle. So it's great to be here, to be able to be doing a cocktail demo for you all tonight. So thanks for having me. Thank you, Natalie. Thanks guys. I have been looking at the chat the entire time and a few questions have been popped up, but they kind of answered themselves okay. throughout this. So I think you guys are very, very thorough in your explanation. Um, we'll give people a, a minute or two to add anything if they want, um, but we're seeing a lot of things. Um, we are so grateful that both of you joined us tonight and especially on such a good drinking holiday as National <laughs> Happy Hour day. Um, yeah, thank you. So for everybody that's watching, we will be sharing all of the cocktail recipes. Most of you are getting a book. Um, Caitlin wants to know where in North Carolina you're from, Natalie. Oh, I am from um, a, ta a very small town called Waysville, North Carolina. It's about 30 minutes from Asheville, if that gives you a reference, which is in the western part of the state. Awesome. So I, I know that Caitlin is on the East Coast in Virginia, so not too far away. Mm -hmm. um, and we're getting a lot of that spectacular, I'm really enjoying the lashes and diamonds. Um, <laughs> what is, uh, somebody wants to know what your favorite cocktail bar in Seattle is. Oh my gosh, it's so hard because I was away for five years and I just came back when COVID started and um, Everything was shutting down, but I made sure that I went to Good Bar, which is one of my favorite bars. I love the space. Um, I also have a, an obsession with El Bistro. Um, I guess like when I was living here, I went there a lot towards the end, but I didn't realize how amazing their bar program was because you just think of it as a restaurant and pie place, but they have such a great cocktail program. Obviously I like rumba. Their rum selection is amazing. You can literally taste anything from anywhere there. I'm super impressed with that. Uh, Roquette, I think I'm saying that right. I did a video in there right before COVID and had cocktails there. I love love their focus on French spirits. I think they carry a lot of agave spirits in there too. Rob Roy, I mean, I could keep going on and on. I think there's some really great cocktail bars here in the city that I wish I could visit right now, but when we can't <laughs> cocktails at home, but that narrows down some of my favorites. Just you talking about them made me like so 
homesick, uh, for, homesick for the bars, for those bars. <laughs> <laughs> even though I'm right here in Seattle. And did you know that El Bistro is supposedly haunted by a man named Frank that helped start Pike Place Market? Oh, that's even better. Random fun fact there. <laughs> Um, so Jasper, who's on here and it's 3 a.m. where he is, he's from Belgium. He wants to know if you can give him some more information or the story behind the, um, partida, is it sign on the bottle? Um, or the, I'm guessing it's the, the little, yeah. The spirit bird? Yeah, the spirit spirit bird. bird. Yes. Okay. So, um, on every bottle, we have a little necker that has our little spirit bird charm. And by the way, Roblefino, this is the actual real bottle. The other two didn't have the spirit bird because those are sample bottles, but this is what the real bottle looks like. It's got that emblem as well. So the story behind the spirit bird is just folklore in my family that, um, the story goes that, um, many moons ago, a, a, a Aztec woman was praying to the gods for prosperity. And when she opened her eyes, she saw a bird fluttering and it brought her to the agave plant. And there was a big hole in the agave plant and the liquid that was rising, she collected in her gourd and took it back to her village and it lifted everyone's spirit. So we call it the spirit bird. And we say that it protects our fields in, in the Tequila Valley. Nice. That's a great story. (laughs) All right. Well, I think that covers all of our questions. Again, thank you guys so much. It was great spending National Happy Hour Day with you. And um, I hope everybody had a great time. We will be sending out information on where you can pick up a bottle of Partida and um, some information on how to get the book if you already haven't. Most of you I know have the book heading your way um, as soon as we get them in front of Natalie. And so thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you to everybody who's watching, including my mom tonight. Oh, how nice. (laughs) And you guys have a really great night. Thanks again. All right. Take care, everyone. Good night. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye.